Hello, good morning. Namaste, buddy. Welcome, Ray Chris here from the Jaguar Path in Costa Rica. Just coming in to say a very quick hello. We've been away for the Sunday mornings as we and we are teaching in several locations online. And I just wanted to say good morning. Five minutes on why I believe everyone's a shaman. I feel that a shaman is a person that is able to change things in life. And I've found myself in several circumstances in life in the past that I needed to change things, either in a relationship that wasn't working or when I was diagnosed with cancer uh, or I was having financial difficulties. So many times I felt that I just needed to escape. I wasn't understanding why it was happening to me. I couldn't figure out how to change things. And then, as you may already know, I met up with the shamans. I met with the shamans in Peru. And as I met the shamans in Peru, one of the first things that happened when I talked to Francisco, Don Francisco, I said, Don Francisco, you're this famous shaman around the world and I've traveled all the way from Greece down through Mexico all the way to Peru to find you please help me heal my cancer and Francisco said I'm sorry but I can't heal your cancer but I can train you how to become a shaman and you could heal yourself and it was that moment that on one hand I felt like my whole heart sank because I was hoping for his help and on the other hand, it was the first time someone told me that there is a chance that I can do something to save myself. I did give my power up to the doctors of Western medicine, and I'm deeply grateful to the NIH, the National Institute of Health, for that, for a surgery that I did there in 2005 letting go of my right kidney, surrendering, and call a radical nephrectomy. So I gave up my right kidney, started getting used to, my body adjusted to living with one kidney, and then I was in Peru. And then I'm having this conversation from the National Institute of Health. We know that there's some other things happening in my body that we're not done, done yet. I'm not clear. I'm not yet. Uh, I don't have a, a clean bill of health yet. I have work to do. And the work started exactly there with me understanding that I could help. I furthermore changed my lifestyle. I changed what I was eating. I upped my yoga practices. And then with ceremonies, with fire ceremonies, with soul retrievals, with cord cuttings, with animal, power animal journeying, I gathered more and more energy. I released myself from stories of the past. I patched holes in my luminous field. Field. I cleared out chakras from childhood traumas that were sitting in my chakras, giving me a perception of life and who I was or what I couldn't do or what was holding me back. And it was like removing these little things that seemed big when I was there close up, but as I removed them, they all just went and became these like tiny little things. And then the bigger ones, just and they became these tiny little things. And then I started sacrificing things in my lifestyle. I let go of eating meat. I let go of drinking. I let go of several things. And it's just like, as I let go of those things, while I thought in the beginning there were sacrifices, I let go of my sleeping in the morning. I would get up and do yoga earlier in the morning. When I gave those up, my sacrifices ceased to be sacrifices. They seemed to be what immediately was oh, this is the normal thing to do. This is the right thing to do. So again, when I was in that situation where I was powerless with my Western mind as a tool, I think the only part of my Western mind were those two things that it did help me with. One is that it did lead me to go to, see, to seek help in Western medicine, and I did. And it did lead me to go and seek shamanic medicine, and I did. And they're both equally important and play the absolute, absolute a purpose, absolute role, rather, in me being alive today. If I had done only surgery, I wouldn't be here today. If I had gone only to the shamans, I wouldn't be here today. I needed that holistic view. Because 
it's really clear to understand that you know when a shaman approaches someone that has dis-ease, that dis-ease in the body, those like it was growths in my body, it was things that were dysfunctional in my internal organs, that meant that my soul coming down in my body as it was trying to come out to have a day, to enjoy, to work, to commute, to be, to create, as my soul was downloading in a body that had problems in certain areas and some of the internal organs were beginning to get funky, I did have stage four cancer, it was difficult for the body, for the soul to move through that body. So there was a part of me that just wanted to retract and then move up towards that place where there was no disease, no friction, no difficulty. But I didn't have that power and I was feeling I was losing the battle. A, because I was told that there's nothing we could do. This is absolutely very difficult in Western medicine. Uh, and to the other hand, when I would be alone, my mind would go and I would ruminate on people that hurt me, on situations that didn't work for me, on how my job, I had to let go of everything that I own. And as I was ruminating on everything that was wrong, I was essentially, without even knowing it, going into a victim story and into a poor me story. It didn't seem like a poor me story because I wasn't showing up with a lot enough character or power of personality. It seemed like, well, my circumstances were really bad. I did have a difficult breakup. I did lose everything and, and my whole business co had collapsed. I did have to move away from home and be away from my two-year-old son, maybe dying and not being able to see my two-year-old son again. So I thought I was absolutely, uh, there was absolutely some real reasons for me to feel that I was at the bottom and I could be sad about me and myself and what was happening and be in pain. Right after Don Francisco, who said, I can train you to become a shaman and you can heal yourself. Once I got the first light of, wait a minute, maybe I should, maybe I should stand up against all this and maybe I, I'll stop thinking about these things and let them drag me down and start seeing how can, well, what is it that I can learn as a shaman? So, he began to teach me, to train me. Again, we started doing a ceremony to thank Mother Earth. So I'm in an Ini ceremony in thanking Mother Earth, I gave up what was holding me back. I gave in what I would want to receive. And I began to feel as I was initiated, got my first initiation as an Earth Keeper, I began to feel that I had the right to be here. And I began to learn from the shamans that, well, oh, Mother Earth loves you loves you and she wants you to be here and she wants you to walk and she'll hold every step of yours as you move along and she'll hold you where you sit and she will always love you and hope started trickling in and connection to magic and there's a loud that started trickling in and then we started doing cord cuttings with previous relationships that were pulling me back or difficult d divorce and difficult things that would happen cutting those cords i started gathering my energy and I started learning tools, and I had the hope that if I train myself, I can do this. And looking back, yes, this is what happened. But then I ventured from the Andes, from the high Andes, or from the Sacred Valley, down into the jungle, and I meet my teacher, the Ayahuasquero, Maestro Panduro. And there was days that it would get to me. Why am I here? Why am I not with my child, with my baby, my two-year-old son? Why don't I have my life? And I would cry. So when I was there... Kind of like seeing someone that was I looked up to, that everyone was raving about, what a healer he was, what an ayahuasquero he was. I actually kind of like found a moment to break down again and fall on my knees crying. It's just like, help me, help me. Maestro Panduro, help me heal this. I have my child, I have my son back home. And he turned around, he looked down at me, and he said, in essence, the same thing Francisco said, but even more <laughs> his style, hard love. He looked at me and said, I don't care about my own emotions. What makes you think I'm going to care about your emotions? In the middle of crying, in the middle of tears and everything coming out, I just went, whoosh, shut down. I'm like, what What did you just say? And I'm thinking, this guy is not compassionate. This guy is not a healer. This, I'm not in the right place. I stood up. I wiped my eyes. I wiped my face. I looked at him. I didn't even know what to say. It's just like, I'm getting the hell out of here. 
And at that moment, when I dried my tears, he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Ray, I think my hermano, hermanito, my little brother, I think you're ready to do the work. And we did, and we began, and we did the work. And you know what? I realized that it wasn't that he was not compassionate. I realized that it wasn't that he was not a good healer. I realized that he tricked me lovingly by allowing me to be, or by not allowing me, being the first one to say, why are you letting all your emotions take a hold of your immune system, your endocrine system, your nervous system? Why are you creating all this mucus from crying and congesting yourself when you need the best breath air to, to get the best air, to breathe freely? When you need to start thinking positively, when you need to start thinking, what is it that I want to do? What's the list? What do I have to do from here to here? Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's, it's a tragedy. Hello, everybody. Hello again. Part two, as we were interrupted from the internet here. Welcome, welcome again. I would like to share and just to bring it home and complete for those of you who are still here. Uh, that what I found in Peru and the power that I found from my teachers is the power that I give to everyone. I have learned dozens and dozens, do dozens of, of shamanic tools that really helped me find my power. And one of the things that I understood while I ventured from, ventured from Athens, Greece, in a psychological state, in a really bad health state of needing surgery and, uh, to, to heal stage four cancer and in the weakest part of my life. As I met the shamans, the first thing they did was started giving me back my personal power. And again, as I was saying earlier, they said, well, you're losing a lot of power from all the emotions you have from a difficult divorce. Let's cut cords with this person, set them free, say you may have a blessed life allow me to have my blessed life. Finding old traumas and where are they hidden in the body and releasing them with chakra clearing. Clearing out old ways, that contracts that I made when I was seven, when I was nine. How to be af being afraid to be in public or being afraid to speak up my truth or shying from things. Did fire ceremonies to release old contracts and fears. I've learned how to do and went into shamanic journeys and found my power animal, my jaguar. I started having someone to walk with. I connected with soul retrieval, having cleared my body to download more of myself. And as I was encouraged to find my center and as I was encouraged to believe in myself, I even came to a point that I said, you know what, if this is it, if I am dying, I will die as a hero and I will die not crying. And that not crying had an awesome effect in my body as if already my body was already rather in, in such dis-ease trying to fight tumors and try to find its equilibrium. It was happy not to have the tears and the sadness and the panic and the fear. And as I started taking over the environment of my body, letting go of acidic, emotions and fortifying myself with these amazing shamanic tools which are human tools i needed someone to help me release that previous divorce that previous relationship it was had it had a hold on me if anyone has a divorce you may feel that i let go of the emotions i love my ex may she be blessed with a beautiful life i discovered that fear that I had when I was seven, eight, I could let go of. I discovered that with the soul retrieval, I'm more capable. And there's a point in my life where in these trainings, I, I got that personal power. And then I was also told by the Jaguar, if you want to still stay, stay alive, if you want to still stay cancer free, you have to make a contract to teach what you have learned. So this is what the Jaguar path is all about. It's my promise to spirit to teach and share with as many people as possible how they can find their personal power, how they can find their footing, how they can find their deciding making, how they can find how to choose things, 
how they can let go of things. You know, I did have some impressions that the shamans were some magicians and that their, were, their power was out of this world power. There is nothing that is out of this world in this world. And the heart of the shaman and the heart of the shamans that I met and the lineage that I met gave me an amazing power and their most magical power that they presented, that they brought, they shared with me, they taught me was a power of affection. Acceptance, admiration, and affection. And with these three pillars, we all can thrive. We feel, we may feel, some of you, some of us may feel that we're trapped because of a situation at work, because it's a relationship in the family, there's a relationship with a, a wedding, a marriage rather, or, or something that's not working well, and we're, and we're dragged down. We feel that we can't escape our reality. And one of the things that a shaman is, is, is a man or a woman that can change reality. And when we gather enough personal power and we have the tools and we and reinforce our way of being, having new thinking and new ways of being, then we can make the changes wherever you're at. The essence of becoming a shaman, becoming a powerful shaman, really lies into how traumatized and how hurt you are. And that hurt is an, a amount of energy that we receive that we feel holds us down but that's an amount of energy that you can transform and you can transform it into your healing power it can be a motivator it can be an absolute drive to change that what is making you a victim what you're hurting from which is totally legitimate you're hurting it's difficult i know i've been there but you can take that that was hurtful that that you felt was weighing on your shoulders and pushing you down that that you felt you could not escape its grip or come out from under, you can take that and you can say, no, I can do this. I am hurt, I am sad, I'm feeling difficulty and panic, but I know there's some people out there, there's some trainings out there, there's a jaguar path out there, there's people that can't support me. They can say, hey, how do I do this? I have been there. And that is the essence of the that shaman that came up from under the phoenix that is the essence of the traumatized healer the wounded healer the wounded healer means that i have been wounded i have been put been hit hard by life and i have been there again losing my business and and being in a very difficult divorce and losing the relationship, having to leave my two-year-old son, who now lives with me and is a 19-year-old, great, tall, strong Odysseus, this awesome guy. I was on the weight of things not, nothing working for me. Nothing was working for me. And I was in my mid-30s, and it drove me into this place of cancer. But with the tools that I have in the Western world, my common sense, there was nothing in common sense other than approach the doctors and say, here I am, what can you do? Here's my power, I give it all to you. They guided me correctly. I'm really happy and I have gratitude for the surgeon and the surgery that I did in the National Institute of Health. Afterwards, I knew I was not done. I knew I was not totally clean and clear of dying and of anything returning. And, and in, again, those moments of weakness, I was met with acceptance, I was met with admiration, and with affection. People stood by me, not holding me, not smothering me, not saying, oh, poor Ray. People stood by me and said, you can do this, Ray. I'm right here. I'm not holding you, I'm not pulling you up, I'm not... You could do this. So wherever you're at, consider this and think and know that there are tools that are thousands of years old and there's a very good reason they're still here because they work on the human psychology the mind now is the same that it was 100 years ago 500 years a thousand years we would all be heartbroken now and a thousand years ago we could all feel insecurity now and a thousand years ago we could all feel alone now and a thousand years ago these are not primitive ways that now we've gone beyond these are archetypal ways that we've lost 
and hence we see the weakness in society, the panic in the collective consciousness, the fear within all. If there's something that's motivating you to stand up, if there's something that's pushing you down, if there's something that hurt you in life, reach out to the Jaguar Path. Check out the jaguarpath.com. Reach out to us at Evolve the Jaguar Path and find your power and receive these tools and join a, an amazing community of powerful people, scientists, yoga teachers, therapists, doctors, uh, massage uh, therapists, uh, people from all sorts of the walk of the world that are there and they're learning more. Even if they're PhD people, if they're in environmentalists, if they're even we have surgeons in our group, everyone can really receive from a whole package of receiving these in, through these nine weekends of 18 shamanic tools which and force you as a human being, giving you knowledge that you didn't have so far, giving you information which is absolutely important for your well-being, for your balance, your power, your way of being in the world. You are a shaman, you are able, and if life is difficult right now, it's asking you to stand up, to wipe your tears away to take a deep inhale, to say, I'm here and I'm going to shine. And I'm going to shine so I can be a light in the world. And I'm going to shine so I can help others shine. And thus humanity evolves. Thank you all for being here this Sunday morning for this short two-part talk on how you are the shaman and how you can be the shaman. I look forward to next Sunday and to more to come, visit the website for all that is happening right now. Thank you all. Horpichai, as we say in Quechua. Thank you. Horpichai Sonkoi. Thank you from my heart. Namaste.